In this video, I'm going to look at one of the things that's often a source of confusion for new authors, and that is object references. One of the nice things about SOP Enable Now is that a single object can appear in multiple places, whether it's multiple places in the same single outline or in multiple outlines or in multiple courses, however you want to reuse stuff you can. So, say I have here a simulation called creating a sales order, and for whatever reason, I need this to be in a couple of other places. So the easiest way of doing this is to right click and select copy. And then wherever I want it to appear, I just paste it into there. So say I want it under maintenance here, my maintenance folder, I'm going to right click and hit paste. As soon as I do that, it's going to ask me, do I want to do it as a duplicate or as a reference? Now as a duplicate, we'll create a completely separate object. And typically we won't want to do that unless we're using this to base another recording off and we're going to change that and have two completely different versions. Generally, you will want to do as reference. This is the one that lets you insert a single object into multiple places. So if I select as reference here, it's now put that in here. And I can do the same thing and put it in multiple other places as well. I can say drop it into my local content one as well. I'm going to paste that in there as reference as well. So now I have this object in three different places. Is it three separate objects? No. Is it one object and two references? No, not really. It's one single object that happens to be in three different places. And that's a really important thing to understand here is one single object. And I know that's the same single unique object because if I go to look at the UID of it, it's unique identifier. The easiest place to find that is under start links. Just look at any of them. And at the end, I can see project which is the type of object it is. And then I've got the UID, the, the unique identifier, which is PR uh, for project and then 3A97 something or other. So that's on the one that's in content. If I go look at the one in maintenance, I see it's exactly the same one, 3A97. And if I go and look at the one in sales, I see again that that is exactly the same one, 3A97. It's got the same ID. It's the same specific individual object that exists in one place. There's another easier way of knowing that, and that is if I go to View, Work Area Details, and select Show Structure Reference Counter, I now get a little number in front of every object in my hierarchy. If you don't see it in this format, you may be on a previous version um, that has a number or a, a dash and then a slash and then another number. This is basically the same thing. This is the, the, the newer way of showing it. But I can see in here that next to creating a sales order, I've got a number three. That means that this object appears in three separate places in the outline. So I know it's the same single object. If I rename it in any one of these places, it renames it everywhere. OK, so that's a good thing to know. There's another place where we can see this. Under basic properties in dependencies, there's this references dialog button. If I click that, this will show me all of the places where the currently selected object is located. I've got show structure references selected here. So there's a number three here, which means it's in three places. So I expect to three, see three objects in here, and I do actually three groups. It's under content, it's under maintenance, and it's under sales. And I can click on each of these, and it will show me where that is in the outline. So content, and it shows me that. If I click maintenance, it highlights that, and then sales where it was originally. So um, that's a useful thing to know. And if I actually want to go to one of these, say I want to go to maintenance, I can select it here, click the select button, and then now that becomes the active object, just in case you need to jump straight to something and you, and you can't remember whereabouts it was. OK, so far, so good. Now. Um, important thing to know, I can delete, this is one single object. If I change it here, it changes everywhere. The important thing that always catches people out though is the delete. So what happens if I delete this? And again, remember I said this is one single object that is basically included in three places. This means that there, there is no original object and references or links to it. It's all basically the same object. So I can come to here and this was the one that I originally copied and pasted into two other places. I can come and I can delete this object. So I'm going to right click and select delete. So you can click the delete key. Now, important here, it says, are you sure you want to delete it? And yes, we do. That's why we click delete. So we're going to click delete again. But note this button here, delete on server. 
this is usually what catches people out because you think, well, is this going to delete the actual object? Um, so should I deselect this? No, don't deselect it. Leave it selected. What you are going to delete on the server is this reference. You're not actually going to delete the object despite what the message tells you. So don't panic. Leave it selected as delete on server. And I'm going to click delete. Now, that will remove it from sales. Okay, it's no longer in there. It checked out sales for me and that's now changed. However, it is still under maintenance and it is still under content. But now the counter says it's in two different places. So I've deleted a reference to that object, but the object itself still exists. And I can do the same thing here. I can delete it out of content and it's going to say the same thing. Do you want to delete it on the server? And if I say yes, it doesn't really delete it on the server. It's still there, but it's now got a one. And this is the important thing to watch out for. And this is why I always have this counter displayed all the time in my library. If I see a one in here, I know that if I now go and delete this, it will absolutely de delete it from the server, okay? Regardless of, in fact, what this setting here says. You can say, no, don't delete it on the server. It's still gonna delete it from this outline and it'll maybe be un un in unsorted if you're lucky. Um, more likely it's gonna be in the trash, but the key thing is it's basically gonna disappear from what you're seeing here. So I typically don't want to do that. Okay. So far, so good. Now, a um, couple of other things. If you want to put something in multiple places, copying and pasting is one way. Drag and drop is another good way of doing it, and it's usually a little bit easier. So I'm going to go to here to my change work area view, and I'm going to select double tree. I'll show you a couple of tips with this. So now I've got two versions of this, um, basically showing exactly the same outline. You'll notice it looks slightly different in that this has all the numbers on it, this one doesn't yet. That's because these two, and you can only have two of them, are basically independent. So although in this one, no, I've got this object highlighted and selected and it's got the dark blue board around it. If I go to here, view work area details, I can see show structure reference counter is selected. However, if I select an object in tree two and then do the same thing of go to work area details, I can see that is not selected, okay? So these two things are completely independent in terms of what you can have displayed in them. Still the same content, but the attributes of that content you can have as different. So the thing I wanted to show you here, I really want this back in sales here. So I'm gonna take it from here, or I could have taken that copy actually, and I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna start dragging it, and I'm gonna go up to sales, and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key before I drop it onto sales. Now you see that the little icon below on the bottom right of the cursor now shows this little kind of link icon, this curvy arrow. That shows that it's going to put a reference to it. Okay, so now if I let go, it's put a reference in there. And I can see that now I'm back to having two copies in there. And again, if I want to put it in delivery, I can drag it over. And the key here, the, the, one of the problems is you've got to have both the source and the destination groups checked out before you can do this because you have to start dragging before you hold down the alt key um, otherwise it doesn't seem to recognize it and if you try dragging it um, it thinks you're going to move it so if you don't have the object set, checked out it's not going to let you do that so you need, you need to make sure you've got it checked out or you've got right access to it anyway and again this one i'll do it the other way around i'll do it both in here I'll take it from here and I'll drag it over to there. Again, click, drag, when I get it to where I want to be. Notice it's got the, the, the square in the bottom right. That means it's going to move it. Um, if I hold down the cursor, uh, sorry, the control key, that's gonna create a duplicate, okay? So if I, if I don't hold anything down, it's gonna move it. If I hold control down, it's gonna create a duplicate. If you think back to that initial dialog box on the paste. And if I hold the Alt key down, it's going to show me, um, it's going to create a reference. So I'm going to do that. And again, I'm now back to having three references in here. Okay, all good. So that's a good way of doing it. Just remember you have right access to both the source and the destination groups. Okay, a couple of other things in here. While we're looking at this, um, there's another couple of useful things that you can do. Um, here in the views, there is an object reference tree. This is a useful thing to have as well. If I select an object in here, in my tree one, and go to object reference tree, that will show me 
all of the places where this particular object that I've got selected appear. So remember, there's a number three here, so I expect it in three places. Here's my three instances of it in gray. And what it shows me is the full path that that appears under. So that's a great way for finding things if you don't know exactly where they are or you've got a huge long outline. This is a good thing because it will show you all the way up to root effectively. And this is all of these are effectively going up to root. So you can see exactly where this appears. Everything else is hidden and it's a good way of focusing on just this object and just where it appears. The last one in here is object reference list. And what that will do for me is basically give me that same flat list, effectively the same as I see in the dialog, in the references dialog. You can see it's exactly the same here. It's just ordered differently. Um, but that's the same information there. So that's another good thing you can do. Um, and from here, I can go into that and I can see its objects, its attributes here and change them if necessary. OK, for now, I'll go back to here and I will just clean things up again. So we were where we were. And again, just watch that number. In fact, keep your eye on this one here and the sales and that number three as I delete these things. I'm just going to use the delete key so you can see that see that number there. Delete down to two, come to this one, delete that and it's now down to one and we're right back to where we were. So that's it. In summary, just remember that you've got one object. It's always one object. There's not really an original object and you know references to that. So it doesn't matter which one you delete or which one you change. It's always the same single object. Okay, that was it. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.